Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel again today for another video on GT Sport. It's the FIA manufacturers round number six driving the Red Bull Ring in the Group 4 cars. Obviously I'm driving for Porsche this season and um, you can't change your manufacturer in the current season. So stuck with Porsche all the way through, which is quite a nice car to be fair. It's very good on tyre wear. And this was the qualifying session. So we did the live stream before this race. Um, I think it was either earlier in the day or the day before. And I didn't practice any sort of um, qualifying practice. I, I remember doing it and um, got into the session and I was a little bit like, I, I should have really practiced the qualifying session. Went into qualifying, um, basically did outlaps and inlaps and outlaps and inlaps because I messed up one lap and then realized that the pattern that I was on within qualifying, it, I, I had to pretty much just risk one lap in qualifying because I made a mistake and um, I ran wide that of turn one and the penalty didn't decrease. So I realized that I was gonna have to, when that happened, I realised I was just going to have to pit, put a new set of fresh tyres on and then just risk one lap in qualifying with fresh tyres because there was no point in me staying out on the medium tyres and trying to do another lap because it would have meant I would have had a bad, you know, not very good tyres and I wouldn't be um, very fast on worn tyres because obviously the tyre were quite strong. So for this lap, I had to take it really easy and just try and get myself in the top five positions. Obviously, I thought as long as I'm in the top five positions, I felt fairly confident that I could probably still get a win in this race because obviously the Cayman's tyre where I knew that I could last to the um, all the way through the stint without pitting on the Cayman with the hard tyres it was it was fairly comfortable to do it wasn't really um, pushing the tyres too much or there was still plenty of grip when I did the practice race so this lap was just about trying to get some sort of lap in as you can see not really pushing the limits too much turn one I, I didn't even run wide at all I just kept it 100% of the limits and we go over the line on a 136.8 which is not too bad and um, gets to P3 I'm not sure if P1's time was glitch if you see it, it still says running and um, that's what happened when um, I think it was um, the other driver in Benson, I think it was in the Fuji race, it happened to him. And another driver, I think, got a glitch lap that happened exactly the same as that as well. And that's what happened. It still says they're running, so it's something to do with an outlap. It's obviously something they need to fix because people are... I mean, he may have got pole, and don't get me wrong, it might have been pole that he got. But um, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure whether that was his actual lap or whether it was a glitch lap. But he started from pole and I'm starting from P3, not too bad. We're going to keep this action all on board with the gameplay footage with the replay camera in the top right hand corner. So I've got to make up some positions in this race. Starting from P3, going to have to overtake really. Um, I wanted to try and get past as soon as possible, but I'm going to have to be fairly defensive as well. You can see behind me from the start, I've got the Ford Mustang, a very fast car. You can see one thing I wanted to do was try and keep it within the limits as much as possible because I didn't want to risk getting any penalties that would maybe harm at the end. As you can see, P2 straight away picking up that half a second penalty and that's why i didn't want to run um, any risk as i have to go defensive into turn two as that mustang is going around the outside he was going to have a little look up the inside but i i saw that coming blocked that inside line made him go around the outside and just about got through the corner still in p3 but now we've got the mercedes amg gr4 on the right hand side and out powering the cayman so much faster down the straight as you can see look at the extra power that car's got over the cayman however going in the braking zone i thought i'm just going to break really late and try and hold it around the outside I managed to get into the corner still and hold my line and keep that p3 so this is really important i've got to keep this p3 because i can't afford to get stuck behind slower cars that are obviously i'm not sure what tires are on how long their tires are going to last i think a lot of drivers were going to probably be on the medium tires to start with and then pit for the hard tire whereas i was on the hard tire just going for a no stop but obviously we've got the lamborghini in front of us as well another car that was probably going to struggle with a pit stop if it um, you know obviously probably would need to pit with them tires i didn't think that they'd be able to run the whole race on the hard tires and then we got the sls in p1 um the SLS isn't the worst car on tyres, so it's possible the SLS could do the stint probably on the hard tyres, but I, I was pretty sure that the pace wouldn't be as strong as mine um, in the game, as you can see now straight away. Managed to give myself a little bit of a cushion there to P4, and picking up the slipstream of the Lamborghini, and I was going to have a little look up the inside here, but I thought, no, there's no point. Going to get back over to the racing line, brake nice and early, and just try and take a nice line through here. You can see not running the risk on the outside just taking a little bit of the corner wide but not as much as everyone else and then the sls really did he ran a little bit further wide had a little look up the inside there but i saw him late give him a little bit of space but i think he might have tapped the rear of my car i'm not too sure there but he's gonna have a little look up the inside now but i felt pretty confident on the brakes i'll be able to break later so going into turn two again and trying to stay as close as i can to the cars in front so i can get their slipstream and pull a move off to get myself up i wanted to really try and make some progress in this race so going into turn three 
a really heavy braking zone in the corner that the Cayman really does like. Um, I think the Lamborghini was a little bit understeery through here, you can see going in the braking, managing to get really close to that Lamborghini on the braking, and then trying to get on the power nice and early, actually got a really good drive out the corner, went to have a little look on the right, dummy down the left, and I'm not sure if he knew I was here at this point, but I could see a gap there, I thought I'm going to brake and go for that, put it up the inside, he sees me there, gives me space, I'm on the inside now, managed to make that move, a really nice move that puts myself into P2 in this race, and that's what I, re I really needed to get that move made straight away because it was really important not to get stuck behind the Lamborghini, obviously with, when its tyres starts fading. And now I've got to try and make progress and get myself up to P1 and see if we can get ourselves in the lead of this race. It's going to be really important to obviously get in the lead and then I can just drive my own race to the end. And you know, I'm not too sure what other strategies other people will be on. I mean, it was pretty obvious that I felt that the Lamborghini would need to pit. Um, wasn't sure about the Mercedes. It probably was possible for the Mercedes to go on a strategy of obviously you know staying out and not pitting on hard tyres. But I felt like the Cayman would have the better tyres towards the end. You know we saw it uh, in yesterday's stream when I was driving the um, the Jaguar, the very similar car to Mercedes. It, it it can do the no stop and you know the no tyre change, but um, the tyres really do wear quite bad at the front so they start understeering a bit but the Cayman however is much better on the tyres you're able to push them tyres a lot harder and keep pace so already starting to gain back on P1 and getting a little bit of cushion to the cars behind obviously they're gaining on the straights that's where the Lamborghini and the SLS etc the Mustang them cars are much stronger on the straights over the Cayman so they're getting my slipstream and gaining a lot of me on the acceleration zones but then as soon as we get into the braking zones and the cornering and the handling zones that's where the Cayman seems to excel and then pull away a bit you can see on the power so much earlier than the other cars um, not sure what tyres some of these other cars are racing I think some of the cars behind me were actually on the medium tyres at, at the moment so for the first two laps they obviously had the grip but now that grip's starting to fade a little bit but P1 seems to be maintaining reasonable speed it looks like his tyres are not really worn at this stage so I started to think possibly that he's probably going to be on the same strategy as me um, going for a no stop because if he's on hard tyres it's very unlikely he's going to pit you know if you're going to do a a pit stop strategy the best strategy if you were going to pit was run the first thin on maybe the mediums or even the hard um, tight and then to pit for the mediums I, you know he could have been on the no stopper but i was pretty i mean the one stop strategy but i was pretty sure that he was going to go for a no stopper again picks up another penalty there so he's risking um some track limits and picking up the penalties and i'm going line managed to get the fastest lap of the race so far so everything's going really well not got any sort of penalty at the moment not trying to push it too far wide out you can see a lot of other drivers driving much further wide than i was I was trying to keep it as much in the limits as possible and getting quite a big slipstream now off this SLS and will the Cayman have enough legs to make a move into turn two as we go into the heavy braking zone. I decided to pull out and go for this and try and brake a little bit later, braked as late as I could, managed to hold the brake in and keep a reasonable line and then trying to get on the power nice and early and actually did that really well, got myself into P1 with another nice overtake and now we've just got to try and keep it nice and smooth to the end now and try and see if we can hold on to this win the Mercedes is going to try and come back but it looks like he's going to try and get rid of his penalty you can see there the, he's starting to ghost so what he's doing there he's he's lifting off and just letting the penalty go down that he's got because he probably thought he's not going to get around the outside in the anyway so he's going to try and do that and then stick with my slipstream but I was the first thing I wanted to do now was obviously try and break that slipstream and push really hard this is the area where the Cayman's going to be able to lose the SLS it's much better through these kind of type of corners um, so trying to drive really aggressive and get on the power nice and early and trying to hook the corners up as much as I can and use some of the exit there and then on the power you can see already the gap increasing to nearly one second and that's what I needed to do was try and break the slipstream as soon as possible just because I didn't the long I didn't really want to keep him in my slipstream although I felt that the Cayman's just going to get stronger whereas the SLS is going to weaken off obviously um, because obviously the Cayman's tyres are better so it's going to start being easier to pull a gap over the SLS so managed to get myself fairly quickly into p1 it took about four laps managed to get it done in four laps from obviously p3 and obviously i think i should have really had pole position but obviously that was my fault for not really understanding how many laps i would get in the qualifying session but as long as i felt like as long as i got it in p the top five that the win was still obviously going to be on the cards because of the strategy that i was able to run and the pace that i could keep in the cayman so already broke that slipstream you see over 1.1 seconds 1.2 seconds clear and now it's just going to be a case of keeping it smooth, keeping the car under control and trying to maintain the speed all the way to the finish. And you can see the SLS behind is just dropping back every now and then. Um, he gains a little bit on the acceleration zone. He starts pulling it back when it comes to the power zones. 
but then as soon as we get to the braking, the, acceler the, the initial acceleration of when we need the grip on the rear, and obviously the corners, they start to gain another half a tenth or so, and then it just it's just slowly building up a bit there. You can see 1.3 seconds now. And then we're going into the stronger section for the Cayman. So hopefully we can increase that gap a little bit more now and just start building upon the lead gradually as his tyres are going to start fading compared to mine. Obviously where his front tyres are going to go with that front engine car, that's going to benefit myself in the Cayman with the mid-engined rear-wheel drive. This is where the hat, you know, this is where you need to be quite um, tactical your choice of car. And this is why I picked Porsche for this season because I went on my American account, checked out which the settings were for this season, obviously at the start of the Exhibition 1 season, um, seeing that the tyre wear was very high. So a good car that obviously to choose in terms of manufacturer for both cars was a Porsche because the Group 3 car has got fairly good tyre wear and the Group 4 car came and has a very good tyre wear also. So it's always a, quite a good idea to do that before you pick your manufacturer because it doesn't let you see the um, tyre wear and stuff before the season, you know, before you pick your manufacturer. So. I always go on my American account, pick a car, um, and luckily I picked a Porsche for that one anyway, and then obviously once you've picked your car, go on to your, your uh, European account because you, you'll know what the tyre wear situation is, then pick a car that's capable, so um, it's something I'll probably do every season, especially in the official seasons, but I'm hoping we'll know a little bit more when we come to the next official season. I'm not sure when that be. It's going to probably be quite a way away. Hopefully they're going to have some other sort of competitions on the game before then, because it's quite a long wait um, before the next official, you know, it's probably going to be next year sometime. So hopefully they're going to um, have another, some sort of competitive, you know, important season in between that, some sort of, or something else based. It doesn't have to be FIA, it could be something else. So let's see what happens, whether they might have a, another FIA official season in between, a qualifier for a World Tour event. They, you know, they need to let us know what they're doing with these World Tour events, whether, you know, if it's based on results in FIA, let people know that so that they know they have to push their FIA races. Because I think if they let people know that um, to qualify for some of these World Tour events, not the I'm not on about the regional finals for the um, um, the FIA finals. I'm talking about the World Tour events that you know we get invited to by. I actually got an invite for one of them, but it was just um, the basic invite for the, obviously the top five drivers in each country, and then they probably select the top few and I, I think I was P4 or 5 in the championship so I think the top three got picked I think Tijni etc got picked we finished a, a couple hundred points ahead of myself at the end of the season so um, them drivers got picked in that but this is one thing they do they do need to do though is they let they need to let people know that's how they're picking them because if people know that they're going to put more effort into the nations because the nations championship seems like the championship that they um, seem to be basing their selection for for drivers for the World Tour events that they have every, I think it's every three or four months they seem to be having them now. But you can see in this race anyway, we're managing to increase that lead. We're over two seconds now and we're just gradually building on that lead. We're on to lap seven now, increasing the lead ever so slightly every lap, keeping the laps consistent. That was my main aim. Have a little look on the right hand side. You can see 37s and low 38s. Um, basically what I was trying to do at this stage of the race because um, I felt like I could probably push still for 37, but it would be too risky on the tyres, and I didn't really want to take too much wear out of the tyres. Wanted to keep some of the wear for the last few laps. Obviously, got to do 11 laps on these tyres, so want to keep that wear fairly okay all the way to the end, so I can keep increasing my lead. And just in case, you know, I, I mean, it was pretty. I, I, I kind of knew that the, the pit stop strategy was not going to work. We, we've seen that. I think the Lamborghinis pitted, the Mercedes that was behind me at the starts pitted. So a lot of them went in the pits with the medium tyres, I think, as well. So they obviously went for the strategy of medium and then hard tyre. So a short stint on mediums and then a longer stint on the hard tyre. But I've, I felt confident they weren't going to be able to get any sort of gains on me, really, because, you know, I tested that strategy out with the, the Cayman and it, it was it was over, like, I think it was about 9, 10 seconds faster by just doing um, your strategy without pitting. So it didn't really make sense for myself to do that i think even the mercedes probably would have been faster to stay out there as we see we've run a little bit wide on that corner there and i'm not sure if we're going to pick up our first penalty with the race there as it went in a little bit too deep obviously the tie wear starting to kick in um, did we get a penalty on that one we didn't get a penalty there so it seemed really strange the penalty system on turn one sometimes you seem to get the penalty sometimes you don't it seems very random and that's what i don't really like about the um, settings for this track at the moment i think they need to um, either make it just like I think it needs to be stricter in terms of how much you can get away with but don't make it too strict that if you run maybe you know, a foot outside the, the line on the um, with your rear right tyre 
they shouldn't really be given penalties for that. They should allow some sort of, um, you know, a little tiny bit out of, out of the white lines, but just not as much as they are at the moment. Um, it's a little bit too much. But sometimes, though, you get a penalty for that. It seems like there's some sort of bug within the system that maybe they, they're not too sure how it's um, doing it because I would have thought they would have fixed this by now. But anyway, as you can see now, we're managing to increase that lead even more now. We've got it very close to four seconds, and this is pretty much what I wanted and what I kind of expected going into the race. I knew that my pace was fairly good here. I love the Red Bull Ring. It's a nice track, and obviously the Cayman, fairly good car. It really does suit the track with its tyre wear. It looks after its tyres. It was one there. It was definitely up there with one of the best four cars you could pretty much have. I think the Cayman, the, um, probably the Alfa Romeo, um, cars like that any cars that look after the size the nsx also probably a very good car here they're all able to because they're mid-engined rear wheel drive they're all able to do the no stop on the harder compound tire and you can see the sls clearly behind me is going for the same strategy of not pitting he's doing a good job and um, still he's around four seconds behind now as the gaps increasing we run a little bit wide there I did actually expect to um pick up a penalty for how wide i ran there that time but again no penalty this time i ran quite far wide but we haven't picked up a penalty and it looked like the car behind was flashing so looks like he possibly picked up another penalty at that point um it was definitely flashing so you can see just trying to keep it nice and smooth going into that corner that corner is starting to become a little bit harder now obviously as the, the wears um get a little bit less on the front so the fronts aren't gripping as much when we're braking so we're having to brake a little bit earlier and obviously then the car's running a little bit wider and the rear is going a little bit loose so we're losing a little bit of time on that corner every now and then but then through these corners i was just trying to keep it nice and smooth and this is where we're gaining the time over p2 you can see every time we get through the fast paced corners this is where the real amount of time over the sls is, is going to obviously catch up and increase over him because the front tires on the sls obviously with it being a front engine car this is the corner where you're going to start feeling you know, I've, I've driven the sls in many um, FIA races you know like you saw me in a previous season use it and I know how that car feels once the front end it starts losing a little bit of lap time because the front just doesn't want to grip through fast corners it's good on the rear on traction but um, through fast corners it can be a little bit slower and you start losing a little bit of time but you see now just keeping it nice and smooth and actually getting in quite a good rhythm of the track now you can see the lap times have been really consistent and um, you can see the gradual drop off in the lap times where the tyres have been obviously getting a little bit worse but you can see still in the 1 minute 30 even though we've got them hard tyres on still and they're fairly warm so this really does show yeah the you know how good this Cayman is on the tyres as you see again running a little bit wide not as wide as pre maybe pretty much the same as we did in the previous lap there running a little bit wide but not to the extent of what we were doing um, in the practice session but this time I think we might have actually picked up a penalty on that time no no penalty on that one um, lap 10 and no penalty so we've managed to go all the way now through to the end of lap 10 so 10 laps without picking up any sort of penalty which was quite nice because it, you know the one thing you didn't want to do was pick up some penalties towards the end and then have to lift off and risk anything but it, i think it would have been safe anyway as we're approaching now five seconds in the lead and we've got just over a lap and a half to go so it looks like a fairly comfortable race and this is kind of the race that i wanted really because i kind of felt like you know i did the moves at the start of the race i did a nice move on the lamborghini put myself into p2 I defended well at the start, obviously when them cars had the fresh tyres, they had them fresh medium tyres that were going to be a lot faster than the um, Cayman on the hard tyres, but then obviously lap, at end of lap one they used a lot of that wear up, so I, it started to even out a bit and then I was able to gain and um, make a move on P2 and then eventually get past the um, SLS also in the braking zone, so quite a nice race so far this, and this was just just in the zone really now, just trying to keep it nice and smooth trying to keep the lap times consistent and then what I wanted to do was try and see what my race time was on this race because you can see on this one I haven't been pushing the limits through turn one anywhere near what I did on the um, on the practice race I did when I think it went over on it's like a, a, was it 18 minutes 06 I think it was or something like that but um, you can see this time we're on the final lap now and it's just going to be a case of keep it smooth and see what we can get to the um, finishing line on that was my aim that was just trying to keep it as smooth as possible and try and get a reasonable good finish and I ran a little bit more wide out that time but I managed to bring it back on the line a little bit quicker than what I did on previous laps but I think yeah we pick up a penalty there so I think it's got to be to do with something there's like a middle line that you you pick up a penalty. if you run too far wide you don't get a penalty if you run a little bit wide you don't but then if you run like just a little bit over that it seems to be given the penalties like i think they need to um block off i think the, the fault comes from if you run really far wide sometimes you can get away without picking up a penalty and that's where they need to kind of fix the system a bit i think but it's pe pretty much a perfect race at this point and another um solid um, race in the fia to be fair because now 
I think I think that's my this is heading for my third win in this season so far out of six races obviously I think I should have had at least really two more wins as well it's a little bit I think there's been possibility for me to win every single round which is a bit frustrating because obviously we had round one when we were ahead of Derek and we kind of had the, the speed to hold on but I made that silly error going into the braking where I misjudged the braking ran wide managed to fight back for a p2 though so the season's gone fairly well so far obviously it's not been the most competitive it's a bit frustrating obviously for this season myself in terms of picking up points because I can I can very rarely get on for the re the peak time in terms of the points when you're more likely to pick up like 2,600, 2,700 points it's much harder for me to get on at them times obviously with children and that stuff and getting them ready for bed so it's quite hard for myself to get on at them times so I do try as much as I can to get on for the more competitive spots but um, this was I think the 8pm or 9pm race I can't remember this one I think it was a 9pm for this one I did want to get on for the 8pm but I couldn't make it so it was a 9pm I had to do so still come away with a win and I think it was over, just over 2,200 points but frustratingly wasn't enough points you can see we go over the line on um, 08 so it was only two seconds behind my practice lobby race but I started from P1 in that and had, didn't have to do any overtaking so and we ran wide quite a lot out of turn one so the advantage of running wide out of turn one wasn't really that massive I and mean, if you just keep it in the limits and do it reasonably well you seem to keep reasonable pace anyway so kind of not real much benefit from doing that especially when you're not getting the penalties and we end up finishing the race quite a bit in the lead and quite a comfortable win like I say and I think it was two, just over 2,200 points but like I say it's unfortunate that wasn't um, bigger than our lowest round so far in the season so um, a little bit annoyed that I didn't increase my um, thing but I think if I was on a different split I think that the pace that I had there with that finishing time would have been good enough for 2,500, 2,600 points in other races um, just unfortunate that I couldn't obviously do the bigger race with the um, more the 75k DR drivers in there so a little bit frustrated at that but still a win is a win um, you can see there 2,221 points not too bad at all and another nice solid result and now we just got two more rounds to go um, haven't even done any practice for them yet I'm not sure if I'm going to have any time to get a track guide out for them because um, obviously it's now Tuesday and I need to probably get on tonight if I can get on tonight I'm, not, I'm probably not going to do the Nations race again because I've seen it and I'm not I just have no motivation to do them type of races. And I'm just going to probably do the FIA Group 3 race, I think it is. Or well, it's a Group 4 race, I think, again, isn't it? At the Autodrome Maggiore. And then we'll do the final race in Group 3 at um, Willow Springs. That should be quite a good one for the Porsche also. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, some good action at the start of the race when we had to do the overtaking. Then it was all about just keeping it consistent all the way to the finishing line while looking after them tyres. We're going to be doing some streams again soon, obviously. Um, possibly another two streams um, towards the end of the weekend on the weekend. So make sure you check them out and we'll be uploading more videos as well. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks again for watching everyone.